Many years ago this month, the Syracuse-Georgetown rivalry was in its heyday. A then-record crowd of 32,000-plus turned out at the Dome to watch Patrick Ewing, Ronnie Cycli, and Dwayne the Pearl Washington. Hoyas coach John Thompson sits a giant part of that rivalry. He's moved on, but now his son has grabbed the torch. John Thompson III will try and stoke the flames of a rivalry gone cold tonight. It's Georgetown at Syracuse next on Time Warner Sports. And welcome to the Carrier Dome, where it's rivalry rejuvenation night. SU students are back in town, and so are the Georgetown Hoys at 11 and 4, taking on the Syracuse Orange, ranked seventh in the nation after winning their last 10 games in a row. Hello again, everyone. Mark Larson, and welcome to the Carrier Dome. Inside, we're talking about just plain chills. Outside, they're talking about wind chills tonight as Syracuse and Georgetown get back together for the 74th time. But for the first time in seven years, it's Jim Beheim against John Thompson again. And John Thompson, not the only familiar name back in the dome. <laughs> Leo Routens, a very familiar name to Syracuse fans. Joining us on the broadcast team tonight, taking a break from the NBA responsibilities to do so. Welcome back, Leo, and what a game to come back for. Absolutely. Can't miss a Syracuse-Georgetown game. Some pretty impressive players on the floor. And if you look at Georgetown, Syracuse fans will get a chance to see maybe one of the best freshmen in the country in Jeff Green. This kid does so many good things on the floor. He's a guy that's got a power forwards body, yet he can play the small forward. He put the ball on the floor. He can shoot it. He's putting up great numbers, shooting 50% from the field. Always impressive for a young player. And one of three freshmen who are starting for the Hoyas. For the Orange, old reliable Jerry McNamara starting to get the shot going again. That's right. Jerry McNamara, you, you never have to worry about him. You know that he's going to make big plays. The important thing right now for Jim Beheim, his assists are up. He's moving the basketball, getting everybody involved. And his averages have risen in the Big East season. Ashante Cook, Brandon Bowman, a couple of juniors for Georgetown, haven't beaten the Orange yet. Hakeem Ork fighting for the Orange tonight, and Demetrius Nichols trying to help the Orange beat Georgetown for the fifth straight time. It's coming up next. Syracuse University basketball on Time Warner Sports 26 is sponsored by your Central New York Buick dealer. By Roadrunner, now five times faster than standard DSL. By Jeep. And by Co-Muffler Brake. There's a Co-Muffler Brake near you. Back inside the bubble, the Hoyas and the Orange just about set to tip off here tonight. 24,000 plus expected. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for both sides. For the Georgetown Hoyas, three freshmen and two juniors. Cook and Wallace are the guards. Bowman and Green are the forwards, and Roy Hibbert is the center. For the Syracuse Orange, ranked number seven in the country, McNamara McCroskey are the guards. Pace and Warwick the forwards, and Craig Forth at the center position once again. Head coach for the Georgetown Hoyas, John Thompson the third. The son of John Thompson Jr., of course, 11-4 and four in his first season at Georgetown, 3-1 and one in the Big East. He's already got two Big East road wins this year. For the Syracuse Orange, in his 29th season, Jim Beheim, the only coach in the conference to win 300 Big East games, and 28 of those have come against the Hoyas. He is 28 and 29 all time against Georgetown. All time series. This is the 74th meeting. The Orange lead it 39 34, and they've won the last four over the Hoyas. Tonight's officials are Bob Donato, Tom Lopes, and Fran Connolly. Mark, watch out for this young man right here. Roy Hibbert, the 7'2 freshman, takes up a lot of space. Space. He creates a great defensive presence for the Hoyas. Very important for the Orange to try to beat him down the floor and challenge him. You never want to let a shot blocker have space. Go into him, use the body, and try to get some fouls on him early. Definitely a big presence inside for Georgetown. It always seems like they have somebody in there that you have to watch out for going back to Matumbo, Ewing, and so on and so forth. Exactly. This, this, these Georgetown teams, even though they have a different look right now with John Thompson the third, they still have that physical presence they really like to throw at you every opportunity. And the team's going to meet at half court. Jerry McNamara, who's got it going in the Big East season. Hakeem Warwick coming off a huge game at Providence, 25 points and 12 rebounds. Had a couple of off games, but seems to have uh, relit the fire and got himself going. And 
What better game to come back for than Syracuse and Georgetown? And McNamara has it poked away. Fourth recovers, and we're underway. Fourth, way out top, over to Pace. McNamara had the open three. Now dishing inside the fourth, and he is fouled. Excellent job by Jerry McNamara, really coming to the ball hard. And, and if you notice what he does, he catches it and looks shot right away, draws the defense up in the air, and throws that great pass down to fourth, who, by the way, has been playing outstanding basketball, really creating a presence himself down low. And fourth completes the three-point play. What a start for Craig Ford. Yeah, and always good to get the big fella involved early because anytime you get your big guys the ball, you know what else they do? Rebound, block shots, keep them happy. And he had a couple of value oop dunks in that Providence game, Craig Forth, in the second half where really came out of nowhere. He's really coming into his own right now. He's not looking over his shoulder. He's not afraid to make mistakes, and that really makes all the difference in the world. And now the Hoyas will shoot for three. That's Jonathan Wallace, an air ball. Hibbert comes down with it. And it didn't touch the rim, so for the shot clock, Bowman's got to get it up. And that's for three, and it's off. And rebounded by Ward. Good defensive stand for the Orange coming out. Krosky passing up the shot to Pace. The left hand is short. Tipped up and in by four. Anytime you have players and defenders that want to block shots, they're going to come out and they're going to try to challenge. That's going to mean commitments are, are going to be made defensively. You're going to have opportunities to get in there and get position. Fourth and uh, King Ward both just waiting down low. With all the scoring options on that SU team, hard to believe uh, the first five points come out of Craig Fourth and another rebound. This one by Pace and McNamara on the push. That opportunity from McCroskey just to go up and try to take that strong to the basket. Lucky to be recovered there by Warwick. And now it's Ian Bowman one on one. Warwick little turn around, in and out. Hoop didn't want it. Cook's got the rebound. Well, if you look at Akeem Warwick's game, if he's aggressive and he starts making his shots, he becomes an un unstoppable offensive player because he can dominate a game on the glass. He can get inside and, and go up strong and dunk it. That shot starts falling. Watch out. Yeah, he's really added that jumper to his game this year, even more so. And actually, he's at five threes this year as well as that ball is tapped loose by McNamara and recovered by the Orange. Tough pass inside. And a kick ball. They're going to reset the shot clock. And how about Craig Forth off to a great start, you mentioned, and he's really picked it up in the Big East play. Well, you know, if you're playing with Jerry McNamara, you want to make sure your hands are up and you're ready to go. And anytime a shot's going up, you know your job is just to get to the glass. The key is don't wait for that shot to be taken. Try to look and establish position as quickly as possible. That time the pass gets away. And it's out of bounds, and Georgetown will take the ball. Jim Beheim telling his troops to make sure they get good movement, movement in sync with one another. Hoy is still looking to get on the board here. Two and a half minutes in. This is a much better shooting Georgetown team than any we've seen lately. Yeah, you can really see that even in the warmups. The mechanics of these players are far better than most Georgetown teams you, you think about. But right now, they're not being aggressive. They're standing on the perimeter, not attacking the zone whatsoever. Trying to get inside of Hibbert, and he lost it out of bounds. And Georgetown going to keep possession for the time being. Unless Jim Beheim could talk him out of it. You know, even if you have shooters, what you want to do if you're John Thompson is try to get some movement, get a little drill penetration, kick it out, and you don't want guys spotting out way beyond the three-point line. Take some easier shots. Six on the shot clock for Bowman. Now into the corner. And that rattles home for a Shanti Cook for three. And the Hoyas are on the board. And we mentioned the better shooting team, and Cook knocked it down. And you can see the range right there. Really got up that got the ball up high and effortlessly. Good defensive stand for Syracuse goes for naught. And now here's Wark on the jumper. And nothing but net. And he's got to take that shot. He's got to keep the defense honest. He's got a great first step. He makes a shot or two. They got to come up on him. Now you can get to the basket. Jonathan Wallace. Namesake of uh, former Orangeman, John Wallace, J Dub. Who, by the way, just signed a, to play in the con with a contract to go over to Italy. So. Oh, is that right? Back in the in the game once again. And three point try by Bowman, no good. Rebounded by four. John Wallace took that '96 team on his back and took him all the way to the Final Four. 
Now here's pace for McNamara, open three, long. Makrovsky the rebound inside and he's fouled. I like what the Orange are doing early in terms of anticipating missed shots. You don't want to stand around and wait. You want to be active. As soon as this shot is up, McCroskey is establishing position and then going up strong, trying to draw the foul. So Lou McCroskey to the free throw line, making his 10th straight start. Six points, a little better than two and a half rebounds a game. And I think he's got an advantage. Syracuse is a little smaller with him in the lineup. But he's got quickness, he's got good anticipation, and if he can get to the offensive boards, it certainly helps the team. And Hibbert will take a seat on the bench as the Hoyas get a little bit smaller. McCroskey's second, also off, he missed them both. Now, if they can get Green involved, they actually become a better offensive team when Hibbert's out of the game. They lose a little bit defensively, but Green picks up a lot around the basket. And there's Jeff Green, the reverse, and he is fouled. Jeff Green, outstanding freshman. He's right now he's got to be ahead of Rudy Gay in the freshman of the year balloting in the Big East Conference. A little bit unheralded coming out of high school, but Jeff Green picking it up for Georgetown as they're getting back in this game. 7-5. The Orange lead this one about four minutes in. Orange lead the Hoyas by two. Four minutes into this one, you take a look at the. Team matchups as they uh, match up numbers wise, and obviously the uh, Georgetown Hoy is always known for their defense, and they're doing it again this year. That's right. Opponents scoring about 59 points a game, but they're one of the things you look at this number. They're they're a good rebounding team, not as good as Syracuse in terms of margin of rebound, but they get to the offensive boards about 11 times a game, which is a pretty good number. And this guy is one of the guys that does the most damage when he's on the floor. Three, about three offensive rebounds a game himself. And he bounces in the free throw to complete the three-point play. And Georgetown cuts it to one now. Now yeah, they're going to show a little one, two, one, one, three-quarter trap. They'd like to extend their defense a little bit. Here's fourth. He's got five points already in this game. But Krosky into the lane. Good shot at it. A little bit strong. And the Hoyas come out with it. Numbers for Georgetown, and they score and they take the lead. Ashanti Cook on the lay-in. Well, the misconception with this team, you hear Princeton offense, you hear John Thompson coming over from Princeton, they're going to play slow, slow basketball. They're not. They will look to run, and if you crash everybody in the offensive glass, they're going to hurt you. And the Hoyas have their first lead of this ball game. The Orange scored the first five points of it. So it's an 8-2 run for Georgetown here. And that pass gets away from McNamara. A confusion there. Josh Pace thought the pass was going to somebody else. He was heading down the lane. And Jerry really trying to get his teammates involved here. I think he's got some pretty good looks at the shots that he could be taking. Good, good ball movement. movement. Yeah, Jonathan Wallace fires for three after some nice passing, but to no avail. And here come the Orange. And McNamara will set things up. You see Georgetown mixing things up and going between the zone and the man-to-man. -man. They also play a 2-3 matchup, which can cause a little confusion. Great pass right there. That's the key. You want to get into the seams, get into the paint. Once you're in there, defense no longer has a good, good feel as far as what's going on. And especially if you get behind in the back of that zone, big trouble for the D. McNamara the assist, and the Orange have the lead back. Inside to Green. Kick out to Bowman for three. Got that one. Brandon Bowman, great shooter from out there at his size. 6'8", 219, about the same size as Akeem Warwick, and he really has that outside jumper. Yeah, Devin, very comfortable. He's got the green light. He's the one player that can let it go anytime he wants for John Thompson. Also, a pretty good pass there from Jeff Green. Again, we've seen him score down low and had a lot of poise that time to find the open man. McNamara in the corner. Can't answer. Rebound kicked right to Warwick. And the throw down by fourth after the whistle, but fans still love to see that. And Hakeem Warwick will head to the line. Also nice to see an aggressive Hakeem Warwick. You know, I saw him play a couple of weeks ago, going back to the Seton Hall game. And I thought he was a little tentative. Really wasn't going at the basket aggressively. Obviously bounced back at a great game against Providence College. But when this young man is aggressive, when he's going to the basket, he creates so many problems for the defense. And not many players can play above the rim like the key mark. First free throw rattles out. That's been a uh, little bit of a trouble spot for the Orange Lakers. The free throw shooting and 
the more you talk about it, the more it becomes an issue. So we just drop that subject right now. Exactly. And if you look at Akeem's free throw, he's got a good looking free throw. It's just a matter of getting your reps in and concentrating, staying focused. So the Hoyas with a one point lead now. And very patient on offense. Nice pass. nice pass from Green to Bowman. He is harassed by McNair. He forced him to travel. They had an opening, but Syracuse closed it up quickly. But once again, an impressive pass from Jeff Green. Really some great court awareness for a freshman out there. You're talking about three freshmen in the starting lineup and doing what they've done. They've won at Pittsburgh where nobody was winning for a while. They won at Villanova the other night in a tight game. And, you know, remarkable poise to win a game like that. We have three freshmen out there. Well, I talked to a couple of Georgetown coaches part of the game and I said any surprises with this group? He goes, yeah, everything. <laughs> <They're impressed laughs> yeah. Better. A lot of young players really stepping up and, and really exceeding expectations early. McCroskey on the kick out from McNamara for three. At times, McCroskey takes some criticism for his shooting. And if you really think about it, here's a young man that's put in a situation where he really doesn't get a lot of attempts to be a good shooter. And if you want to make shots, you've got to get a rhythm going. And you know, I think he's got a pretty nice form and he can make shots as long as he gets comfortable and gets his touches. Rebound for Wark in the orange coming back. Two point lead trying to add to it and a foul out top. Ray Reed going to pick up the foul on McNamara. Well, you can tell Georgetown wants to be very aggressive with McNamara, and he's the type of player that if I'm coaching against Syracuse, I want to get up on McNamara. I never want to let him get his feet set. Any shot he makes against my team would have to be off the dribble or on the move. And so far, he's done a good job of finding his teammates in those situations, but you have to wonder what effect he'll have on his shot if he doesn't himself get enough shots up. And another foul called down low. That one also against Georgetown. Daryl Owens. I'm still having a hard time seeing, looking at John Thompson the third here. I'm used to the big fella on the sidelines, <laughs> talking trash, looking, staring you down. I'm not, I gotta get used to this. Where's the towel? Where's the milk carton? Orange had the lead. Well, there's not 30,000 plus like there were when Leo Routens was playing in the Syracuse Georgetown rivalry, but a good crowd here tonight. and. I think part of the reason is because John Thompson is back, isn't it? Absolutely. And like I said, as before we went off the air, that you know, I'm just not used to seeing this John Thompson on the <laughs> sidelines. I'm used to the big John, and he did. He used to be intimidated. He'd stare you down. He'd say all kinds of things to the players on the floor, and he really tried to take control of the game in a lot of different ways. And boy, those games are absolute brawls. Well, he, more than anybody, responsible for stoking this rivalry to what it was with his comment after the last game at Manley Fieldhouse. Yeah, I hate to admit it's still one of the best lines I've ever heard. Manley Fieldhouse is officially closed after Torchdown snapped Syracuse 57 game home winning streak. The very last game played at Manley back in 1980 and boy that quote has lived on and that really that's really where the rivalry took oh, yeah. off. Oh yeah of course Syracuse fans added to it and delivering pizzas late at night to their <laughs> hotel rooms and throwing fruit and assorted items on the floor over the years. So. A lot of great games, but you know they were just so intense. I mean, the, the guys just went out and played hard and attacked you. Uh, you. You just you knew you were for a battle every time you stepped on the floor against Georgetown. And you played in this rivalry, I think it was eight times. Does that sound about I right? So yeah, yeah. Four and four. I went back and looked. <laughs> I don't remember the four losses. Yeah, I remember probably. the wins. So many great games in the history of the rivalry, and uh, we're going to be looking at one of those later in this game, the 1985 game here at the Dome. A then record crowd turned out for that one as Syracuse hosted the defending national champs and beat them down the stretch. We'll look back at that one later on. McNamara the pull up. And Can't see, get it to those go. Those are the type of shots that he's going to see. On the move, catching, turning. Now he does a real good job of getting himself open those shots. Just has to make sure he goes straight up and down and not float too much on the shot. Oh, but nice kick out to Wallace. And he's off. Offensive rebound though. Bowman takes another shot at it and he drains it. Now that shot's a lot tougher than it looks. When that defender floats by you and you kind of wait for him and then take that shot without moving your feet, it's a lot more difficult than it appears to be. But right now, Syracuse is going to have to make a couple adjustments. Long shots equal long rebounds, and you have to be prepared to box out, extend your D. Great pass inside to Roberts, and he can't finish the layup. 
Rebounded by Jeff Green. So Georgetown has already taken nine threes. Isn't that something? And they've hit three of them. And again, so odd. In the old days, Georgetown, they wouldn't be taking threes. They'd be trying to take it in and dunk on you. Third best three point, point shooting team in the conference right now. Bodies flying at Bowman. Draws the foul. A nice job by Bowman. He's the perimeter guy that can shoot, but he's not afraid to go to the bucket. We were talking about the shooting of Georgetown. Deep, deep threes in the corner. Nice pass out here, finding the man on the wing and just ball movement. Once you get that ball inside and kick it out, it changes so many different, so many things out there. They're getting in trouble when you're standing around. When they do get that ball in and out, they're getting great looks. Bowman to the free throw line. Poise are perfect tonight. One for one. And Bowman's a nice player. We talk about his perimeter game, but he doesn't have a, a big build, but he doesn't mind going to the basket. He's not a great finisher, but he will get in there and try. Brandon Bowman, big fan of Tracy McGrady. And you're in the league, and you can see a little resemblance, can't you? Yeah, Same body Similar type. Similar body type, exactly. Got the jump shot going. Now he wants to be Tracy McGrady. He's going to have to make sure he finishes around the bucket. <laughs> Tracy, one of the best at taking it to the hole. Couple of free throws for Bowman. And he's got eight points in this game and Georgetown three point lead. I'm very impressed with the poise that Georgetown is playing this game with, with the amount of young players they have. Turn over there. Nichols throws it away. Here comes Wallace. Looking for somebody to pass it to. Now it's Reed in the corner and the Hoyas will set up shot. Crowd getting a little restless here. Fourth turnover on the orange. Now you're not you're not going to be surprised at Georgetown having three turnovers being young, but Syracuse got to take control. How about that? And who gives him the ball? Hibbert gets it, but Jeff Green makes the play from the baseline once again. Big stuff for Roy Hibbert and a timeout by Jim Beheim. He wants to know what's happening down there as Georgetown's pulled out to a five-point lead here. Nine minutes to go here in the first half. Well, once you get that ball inside here, great pass from Jeff Green. Hibbert goes up strong, takes up a lot of space, but you get that penetration. First the drill penetration, then the baseline, and then straight up in the middle. I like the ball moving. I like the poise. Hibbert's nickname is the Big Stiff. How about a big stuff right there? It was <laughs> didn't look like a stiff, stiff about that. Well, he's not a guy that really count on a lot offensively. He's more of a defensive presence, but he can finish there. Live women's basketball coming up on Time Warner Sports tomorrow night. The Irish visiting the Orange women up at Manley Fieldhouse. 7 o'clock tip here on Time Warner Sports 26. And the Orange women coming off two straight wins in the Big East. They beat Pittsburgh over the weekend. And last Wednesday night beat Providence. Warriors on a 7-0 run last three minutes. Let's see if the Orange can do something a little different here with Edelman handling the ball at the point. If they can get McNamara some easier looks. Edelman into the game along with Nichols, McNamara, and Warwick with the turnaround. And Terrence Roberts also in the game. So Warwick gets the Orange back on the board and the crowd starting to get back into this one now. Just have to be aware of that man on the baseline. Right now it's Bowman just kind of floating around down there. Reed penetrates over Roberts. Switched hands in midair and Reed knocks it home. Yeah, tough shot. Very quick. Sometimes gets out of control, but that time doing a great job of getting it up nicely. Here's Nichols, a deep three, and he got it. That's a big shot for Demetrius Nichols. Confidence maybe wavering a little bit, but that'll help. Well, the same applies to Nichols, what I said about McCroskey. you got to get touches to feel comfortable when your role is to be one of the shooters. And, and oftentimes, both of those players don't get as many shots as they need to. So always good to see them hit one early. Nichols only a 28% shooter from out there. And, and you look at a shot, he's better than that. Yep. It's just a question of getting confidence and feeling comfortable with your shot. Here's Green surrounded by McNamara Nichols. And I Knocked think the, out of bounds. I think the Orange need to do a little bit more of that. Get out there, trap, be aggressive, especially on some of the young players. Time out on the floor. The Hoyas will have eight seconds to shoot when we come back. Hanging on to a two-point lead. Ray Reed to the basket. 
Akeem Warwick starting to get the shot down a little bit. And we talked about it earlier that when he once he gets that shot down, it makes it so difficult to defend him. He becomes unstoppable. And that's a nice rhythm to his shot. He's getting more and more comfortable with that little turnaround. A la Michael Jordan. You get a guy on the baseline, a little shake turn. And, and with his legs, when he's down low and he comes up, you're not going to touch that shot. Mark Larson and Leo Routens here at the Carrier Dome for the Hoyas and the Orange. Glad you're with us here tonight on a big night for the Orange, going for their 11th straight win. And shot clock buzzer goes off as the Hoyas get it off, and Hibbert just standing there, a couple of offensive rebounds, and he puts it back in. Well, you also have Bowman and Green. They're all in there battling. They're trying to keep that ball alive. And, you know, coming into this game, that was one of the big concerns for Jim Boeheim, the offensive rebounding abilities of this team. And a four-point lead now for the Hoyas. And the ball through the legs of Edelin. And second time, uh, Demetrius Nichols has thrown it away. Yeah, a couple of unforced turnovers for Syracuse. They really have to take care of the basketball. We talk about the offensive boards. Georgetown five already. And if Syracuse looks at it the way they need to, if you take care of the defensive board, make sure you get the ball. Georgetown is crashing. They're sending three, four guys on the offensive board. That means you're going to have an opportunity to get that ball and head the other way. And you look at the rebounding totals right there. They're even, but one more on the offensive end for Georgetown. And part of the reason they have a four-point lead here. Well, it just keeps you from running as well. Yeah, that's what Syracuse like to do. And their pressure on the offensive boards creates problems. And Green stepping on the baseline. Steps on the baseline, so a turnover for Georgetown. And, you know, the Orange have been doing a great job of forcing Georgetown to use the entire shot clock, but then they're giving up that offensive rebound. And well, at the same time, this Georgetown team is going to be a little bit more patient than Georgetown teams of the past, so they will extend that clock a little bit more than what we would expect. That's where the Princeton exactly. comes in. And the Orange now trying to cut into that four-point deficit. Nichols, little pull-up. Warwick had it for a second. Now Nichols throws it out of bounds again. That's where a good ball fake comes into play. You give that ball fake, the defense is running, bang, you get a backdoor. And Josh Pace going to come in and replace Demetrius Nichols, who takes a seat, had a big three-pointer while oh, he was in there. Oh, got to avoid but... that seat right there. Yeah. <laughs> I had to sit there a few times. You don't want to sit there after a turnover. They're like, move over, guys. Give me some room. <laughs> uh, Jim Bayon does a great job with this group, I'll tell you. Every year, it's just amazing to me how, how he gets his team to play and perform, and he gets the right players to fit his system year in and year out. And they get better every game, which is what every team talks about trying to do, but Syracuse Orange seem to do it every year. Off to a 17-1 start this year, their best start in five years. Well, it amazes me, and not because of my Syracuse background, but every year you look at rankings and people just underestimate Syracuse year in and year out and go, hey, as long as this guy's on the bench, as long as you've got Jim Beheim, Bernie Fine, and, and uh, Mike Hopkins, you're going to be in great shape. A shot he cooked to the bench with his third personal foul. That's a little bit of a problem for Georgetown. One of the two juniors that starts for this team. The point guard, the guy who runs the show. Unfortunately, they got a different look when Reed's in the game at that point guard. They're going to be a little quicker, maybe not as controlled, but they still can create problems. Now Warwick is fouled by Bowman as he tried to spin out of trouble. That looked pretty clean right there. It looked like he had all ball. John Thompson thought he did. Good defense, staying down. Jeff Green and then Bowman coming over. Eh, get the replay. May have been a little arm on that. Watching Akeem play earlier as well, that you know, I thought that you know, sometimes when you're you're nearing that NBA area, you're ready to get to the NBA. I think players sometimes try to do a few more things they think they need to do, where people are looking for them. And I think Akeem Warwick maybe tried to be a little bit more perimeter earlier this season. The perimeter shot is a threat. It keeps the defense honest. You take it when it's there. But his strength is just using quickness, going to the bucket, and being a monster on the glass. And that will get him and everybody in the NBA excited about him. A terrific point. And Warwick now with seven points here for the Orange and four rebounds. And it's a two point game. And here's Hibber on the baseline. Elon. Almost took it away, stepped out of bounds. That's just a great read by Edelin. Once Hibber put the ball on the floor, he had nowhere to go, so he's either going to pass it back or try to go the other side. Edelin was right there. A couple of games ago against Notre Dame, Edelin just seemed to be in the passing lane all night. Seven steals in 24 minutes. Green the miss, fourth the rebound, and here comes Edelin on the break. 
Throws it up there, fourth to foul over time. Great example of why you never give up on a play. Fourth is the guy that got the rebound and finished it off at the other end. And the crowd making some noise. And that ball kicked out of bounds by Pace. When we talked about Hibbert off the top, and Jim Beheim stressed this to Craig Forth before the game, he does not run the floor well. Craig Forth got the rebound, and he just outran him to get down, and he was able to get the follow-up. Craig Forth already seven points in this game. He averages a little over seven in the Big East. So a big first half from Craig Forth, tied at 22. Uh, everybody develops at their own stage and at their own pace and a lot of times big guys take a lot of criticism for their rate or, or slower rate of development. He's coming into his own. He's feeling good about his game and it's helping Syracuse a lot. Tough shot that time by Wallace and War comes out with a three on two for the Orange. And a foul on the drive and Warwick will head back to the free throw line. Got to be a little careful about making up your mind what you're going to do with the ball. Well ahead of time. You can let the defense will dictate what you're going to do when you're coming down the floor. Or uh, work took that ball in his right hand and he was pretty much was sure of what he was going to do. He's going to try to make that pass. Defense will tell you what to do. Fortunately, got fouled. And looking good on the free throw there. Warwick missed his first free throw tonight. He's made four in a row since. And again, if you look at a shot, he's got a real nice looking free throw. Gets his legs into it. Good rotation. Good release on the ball. This tells you how much a part confidence plays in that oh, yeah. little simple little shot there. He's had some games where he really couldn't knock it in from the strike there with nobody on him. And how it affects everybody else in the team. I mean, yep. free throw shooting is about as contagious as anything else. <laughs> but the Orange had the lead back by one. Four minutes to go here in the first half. Ever nice pass inside to Bowman. Spins. Didn't get it, but he drew the foul, and War comes up limping a little bit. And Bowman to the line. A nice pass from Hibbert. He got rid of that ball. As soon as it came to him, he was well aware of where his teammate was and just threw it down there. And, and we mentioned Bowman earlier that he's not real strong, but he's not afraid to get in there and kind of mix it up. Junior out of Santa Monica, California. Got the first free throw, and he's got nine points. Good looking player. If you, if you look at the different players they have, they complement each other well. And I think that's one of the reasons they're, they're excited and surprised at how well they're doing. These players are a good fit for one another, and they're unselfish, and they're willing to make the extra pass. One out of two for Bowman. We're tied with four minutes to play here in the first half. Neither side is led by more than five. Warwick falling down, gets rid of it to McNamara. A little frenetic pace. And now Pace comes out with it. 14 to shoot. Edelin hands off to McNamara. That was good all the way. But not only does Edelin give the ball to McNamara, he sets him a great screen off the dribble to give him enough room to get that shot off. And when those two guys are clicking together, this is a real tough team to play with. Well, he gives McNamara a chance to have a little less ball handling responsibilities and a little bit more freedom to just get that shot going. Each side with three three-pointers now. And here's Wallace going for another, and he answers. A rainbow. Good setup from Bowman. Anytime you get that dribble penetration, you'll get something good. Wallace's first bucket ties it at 26. Now, if you look at his shot, he's a guy that seems to take a lot of time to get that shot off. So you really want to try to get to him as quickly as possible to change it. Three-point percentage in favor of the Orange. As fourth going strong to the basket and he's fouled. How often do you see coaches tell big guys just take it up just go up strong and try to dunk it and that's the reason why you get to the free throw line. And even though he didn't get the basket that's why the crowd is applauding. They want to see that out of Craig Ford. He's really seven feet 256 pounds. Take it to the bucket. And Jerry McNamara drains it and we're tied at 26. Back at the Carry Dome, we're tied at 26, just under three minutes to go here in the first half. The Orange and the Hoyas. Game I've been looking forward to for a long time. I know a lot of people talk about the rivalry maybe not being what it once was since John Thompson Jr. left, but with John Thompson the third back, maybe it starts to come back, and the way the Hoyas are playing like contenders again, 
that's going to help too. Well, you have to be impressed with the personnel he's assembled. A first year coach, he's got some outstanding freshmen. You know they're going to be there for a while, and the success they're going to have this year. Bowman on the bench right now with three fouls. That certainly helps out Syracuse, but the success they're going to have this year is going to bring in other players, and that should bring Georgetown back, and uh, it's good to see in the Big East. All right, the Orange had the lead back. McNamara takes it away. Warks got it inside the pace. The defense creating the offense, and the Orange a three point lead. And now foul out top. Well, it's, you know, it's an aggressive foul. You're going after, you're trapping. Jim Beheim did like the call, but I'd like to see Syracuse get out and trap right now. Anytime you're playing a team with young players, try to create a little different mood out there, try to get the crowd into the game, and the more aggressive Syracuse gets, the better it'll be for them. First foul on McNamara. Now the Hoyas reset here. And Georgetown with Bowman and Cook on the bench. A couple of starters. They'd be happy to keep this one close by halftime and maybe better than that as Wallace hits another three and ties it up again. Excellent skip pass from Green. As soon as that ball went to him on the baseline, Hibbert dropped down. The defense thought the ball was going to Hibbert. And just skipped it right over his head to Wallace. Wallace started out cold. He's hit two in a row now. And under two to go here in the first half. Pace penetrates left hand, rolls it in. That's the little floater. Now, not anywhere near what the guy I'm going to refer to, but still a floater. Remember Sherm Douglas, when he played, he had that little floater. You go, what kind of shot is that? Yeah, the little teardrop. Uh huh. And Josh Pace, he's got that floater as well. McNamara for three. Here comes the crowd. This is what they've been waiting for. That's why I love that trap. Norris trying to. Give themselves a little cushion heading into halftime. It gets the blood flowing. Anytime you're playing a team like Georgetown or this particular Georgetown team, they're taking a lot of time. They're being very patient. That settles the crowd down. Get out there and trap. Right now, Jim Bayham didn't like that call. Akeem Warwick getting it denied. And that's his second foul. Check out McNamara. Boy, when he's that open. Well, I just like the way he sets himself up. He gets that inside foot planted, steps into his shot, textbook. Six points for McNamara along with three assists. And the Orange a five point lead with around a minute to go. It's been a 16 to seven Syracuse run since they were trailing by four here. Green trapped on the baseline. Nice pass to Wallace. And he buried it again. Three wow. in a row for Jonathan Wallace. Wow. That freshman could shoot. <laughs> You know what? I'm, I'm wowing not over the <laughs> shot, just a shot. But green again. I mean, you're talking about getting double teamed and throwing that pass out there. And look at Craig Forth on the cut. A little give and go. Got the pass from McNamara. Craig Forth coming out aggressive on the offensive end. He's got eight points and five rebounds here in the first half. Now look at this green. He's got two guys on him. And Jim Baham was upset over the fact that Wallace was left alone. You have two players on green. You don't have to have everybody drop it down. Somebody's got to be aware of who's got the hot hand. But if there anybody, if this guy's aware of it. He knows he better find Wallace. Last count, I think he's got to be up to around six assists. Well, he averages three assists a game. And yeah, he's got five in this game already. Pretty impressive stuff. Offensive rebound from McCroskey. Warren, another try at it. So quick off his feet. Hakeem Warwick's got 10 points. And the Orange back to a four point lead. Hoyas will play for the last shot. We talked about the offensive rebounding for Georgetown. How about Syracuse now? They've picked up eight offensive rebounds, so they've kind of hit Georgetown the way they like to attack. And Thompson calls a timeout with 12.6 on the clock to set up the final play and see how they can execute their half-court offense. A 
big concern. Uh, Jim Beheim, he took Billy Edlin out of the game, and he said, hey, you got to be aware. You can't have everybody going to the ball. Somebody's got to stay back. Coming up at the half, we'll have an update from News 10 Now. Get you caught up on the day's events and also the weather. Man, it is cold outside. Seven degrees is what the thermometer up there reads. Nice and toasty in here, though. That's coming up at halftime. We're also going to talk with the head football coach, Greg Robinson. He's the guest of honor tonight. Going to talk to the crowd a little bit. We're also going to flash back a little bit back to uh, one of those Georgetown Syracuse games of old and I'm sure you've got plenty of stories to tell about the rivalry game. Oh yeah. As I said anytime you think about the old Syracuse Georgetown games the intensity one of the things I remember is you had to go back to the dorm the games over you're going to go back to the dorm maybe hit the books you couldn't hear for a couple hours after the game <laughs> you're sitting there the buzz was just so loud from the crowd. Well that'll hamper your study habits but you made it through. Final 10 seconds of the half, final five seconds now. Reed penetrates and he's fouled by McCroskey. And they had one foul to give, so that's a good foul. It'll be inbounds with 1.3 on the clock. And now Terrence Roberts going to check in quickly from McCroskey. And Beheim making that defensive substitution, a little bit more size on the back line. Maybe worried about the lob pass in the lane. Let's see what they do here. Out for a free try, and that's short at the horn. Good defensive stand for the Orange to finish the half, and they'll take a four point lead into intermission. Well, the Hoyas and the Orange getting back together again. Big stuff by the big stiff. It's a big freeze as well, but the Orange have the lead at the half. Welcome back to the Carrier Dome. Syracuse leading Georgetown 36-32 here at halftime. 20 minutes away from their fifth straight win over the Hoyas. But anything can happen. And anything usually does happen when these two teams get together. <laughs> this flashback 20 years ago, 1985, John That's Thompson. That's the guy I'm talking about. He pulls his team off the floor because fans were throwing oranges onto the court. Jim Beheim tells the fans to knock it off. How about Patrick Ewing, 21 and 17 in that game. Remember, Georgetown at this point, the defending national champions. Raphael Addison with the perimeter jump shot. How about Pearl Washington? It all comes down to Pearl. The final seconds down by one. Pearl. Nobody jukes like Pearl Washington. Could you guard that guy? Nobody could guard him. Once Pearl got it going off the dribble, he could create any shot he wanted to, and he wasn't afraid to take the big one. Gave the Orange a one-point lead. He makes it two with the free throw, and it's up to Michael Jackson. And not the pop singer, of course, but Michael comes up short, and Syracuse beats Georgetown that night, 65-63. They storm the court, 32,000-plus. At that time, that was the largest on-campus crowd ever to see a game. Right now, it's 24th in the Syracuse Annals, so that's how things have changed over the years. Nothing's changed though when these two teams get together. Great ball game. Syracuse lead them by four. More halftime after this. Back here at halftime at the Carrier Dome as the Orange have a four-point lead over Georgetown and new football coach Greg Robinson just spoke to the crowd moments ago. Coach, thanks for being here with us right now. And uh, let's talk about, uh, first of all, I want to know, have you moved at all? Have you found a place to live? You've been on the go for the last couple of weeks. That's my wife's job. She's already looking. She wants one of those 30-day escrows. Okay. All right. Well, good luck with that. Tell me about uh, what you talked about with the crowd tonight and really got the crowd fired up. Well, you know, first of all, it's great to be here and to see the enthusiasm that this crowd has. This is exciting for me to see. And you can just get a sense of what it's going to be like to have a great home field advantage. You also met with the team for the first time today. Can you tell me generally on how that went and what kinds of things you guys talked about? I was very pleased. I felt that we had a very attentive group and I can see the look in their eyes. These are great young people that uh, they're hungry. They want to get after it and uh, I think we were about ready. We could have, we probably could have got out of here this afternoon right after the meeting and gotten going. But uh, I, I'm liking the way things are shaping up and uh, I just like the way the young people come around and introduce them 
themselves. Uh, it's, it's an upbeat group. Busy couple of weeks coming up for you. National Signing Day just a couple of weeks away. Tell me about recruiting over the next couple of weeks. Are we going to have any big surprises, you think, on signing day? We're working real hard. We're working real hard in that area to get some surprises. But uh, I tell you what, we want to make sure that uh, we, we are combing the state and we're backtracking in the state. We want to go back to the top players in the state that maybe sound like they might be heading to other schools, and we want to aggressively hit them as well as talking to uh, all of the commitments that are holding firm with us. And uh, we've asked them to be patient now. We're going to hit the road tomorrow morning. And, uh, and as a matter of fact, we've already been out. But uh, uh, had a couple home visits, already had uh, a couple in the last two nights. And uh, uh, good things are going to happen. You're a busy man, Coach Robinson. Thanks for spending some time oh, with us. Great. All right, best of luck. Best of luck over the next couple weeks. That's head coach Greg Robinson of the football team as he's got some work to do. And so does the basketball team. They're up four. Second half coming up next. Pretty good shooting on both sides of the first half, Leo. Absolutely, especially from long range. Georgetown going 6 of 14 from three. Green making some nice passes. Wallace, he's been the man. Three of six from behind the arc. And for the Orange, Jerry McNamara, also a couple of threes for the Orange. Well, you know Jerry McNamara's going to get his shot going. His teammates doing a good job of fighting him for that open look. And we're ready for the second half. Leading scores in the first half. Bowman and Wallace each had nine points. Bowman also had three fouls in that first half, along with Ashanti Cook. Hakeem Moore, 10 for the Orange. Craig Fourth, eight points. And McNamara, six points. And also three assists. Well, let's see if Syracuse extends their defense and goes a little bit more trapping the way they finished the first half. I thought it really made a difference for them. Cook on the pull-up. Offensive rebound. Hibbert had it. Got it back. They got fouled by Warwick. You always try to teach big guys, if you catch that ball up, keep it up. Don't bring it down. And I thought Hibbert did an outstanding job on this offensive rebound. Watch as he gets it. He just reaches up, doesn't bring it down, goes up, goes up again. That second effort is so important. The one thing he can add to that now, you keep it up, now just get your legs into it a little bit more, and that's going to come with strength. He's just a young player that's just developing right now. And fortunately, they give the foul to Craig Forth and not a key Warwick. It would have been three on Warwick. And now it's two each on Warwick at fourth. And Hibbert trying to go two for two. And he got it. A big guy that makes free throws. Impressive. Good stuff for Georgetown. And a lead down to two for the Orange. Good ball game here. This Georgetown team so much better than anybody thought they'd be this year, and you can see why. Yeah, this team plays with a lot of poise. Does a great job of sharing the ball. But Cross gonna pull up in and out. Rebounded by Bowman. Ever nice pass. Good idea. Bowman couldn't handle it. Out of bounds to Syracuse. We've seen that all game long. The big guys, whether it's Green, Hibbert, it, Pound Bowman is one of the big guys. That time he was on the receiving end, couldn't catch it, but they all look for each other and they make great cuts down the lane. You love a big guy that can pass oh, the ball, yeah. don't you? Something about it. Now here's Craig Forth, way out top. McNamara open three. Back rim, rebound by Warwick. Don't give Jerry another shot. Had McCroskey and McNamara picks up the foul instead. And the foul's on Ashanti Cook, and that's number four. Well, that's a tough call right there. John Thompson did not like that call. Thought for a second it was a traveling violation, but it, it was close. It was close. But again, the, the benefit of the ball fake, so many players don't bother to use it. That time McNamara was able to set himself up with it. McNamara with the inbounds. Jumper not there. McNamara two for seven now from the field. And the Hoyas another chance to tie. I always used to remember this as a player, the fans standing and clapping. With every shot you miss, it just gets louder <laughs> and louder. And you also sense a little impatience. Yeah. Like, you better make a shot. I want to sit down. I would think the pressure would grow after yes, a minute or two. Yes, it does. Heather, good interior pass. Uh, that was blocked by Pace, but he also fouled Jeff Green. Well, I can't tell you how impressed I am with his ability to find the open man. He just sits there. He knows where everybody is. As soon as he gets that ball, he takes that dribble to bring forth up, knowing that his man is going to have a great opportunity to score down low. Roy Hibbert, freshman out of Georgetown Prep. He was coached by an ex-Hoya there, Dwayne Bryant. 
impressive numbers as a high school senior, as you would expect. Well, so many times you would expect a young player to panic. All of a sudden, a defense is coming at you. You, you rush the pass. He's been very patient and very poised every time he's gotten the ball in the paint. And a few Georgetown fans behind the Hoya bench. That's Terrence Roberts back into the game for Louis McCroskey. Jeff Green only four points in this game. They've done a pretty good job so far on Jeff Green. But he, he does has, have five assists. He does have five assists. You're right. He has found his teammates, and they have converted. And he's two for two from the free throw line there. We're tied again. Bowman knocks it away and stuffs it home. Georgetown throwing the press right back at the orange. Long arms of Brandon Bowman. Coming up with a steal and a stuff. And another steal. Green this time. Jim Bayon wants a timeout. He is upset right now. Syracuse just not handling this pressure at all. And there's a timeout. Two consecutive steals by the Hoyas, and they've taken the lead back. 8-0 run to start the second half. Aggressive defense. Georgetown just coming up, trapping on the ball. Pace, a little careless pass. Bowman, great hands. Spectacular finish. And Orange having another turnover right after that. Here, this pass just a little bit too long. Nothing on it. And Green anticipating it, stepping up and going up nicely for the finish. And he can't finger roll. And yes, he can. And Jeff Green now suddenly with seven points, five assists, three rebounds. Good line for Jeff Green in this game. One of three true freshmen in the starting lineup. And the Hoyas a good start to this second half. They've got a four-point lead. And you talk about surprise teams, and Boston College certainly one of them. Now up to number nine in the country at 3-0, but Georgetown, everybody thought second to last, and there they are. Yeah, coming into this season, not a lot of expectations, but that's what you have that unknown factor. When you have freshmen, they can have all the credentials you could expect, but what are they going to do when they step on the floor? And this group has definitely produced. So far, so good. Villanova just took one on the chin uh, to Georgetown. West Virginia. Uh, West Virginia got pounded by Boston College over the weekend, and they got off to such a great start. Yeah, undefeated now they're struggling. before the Big East season, and they can't they can't get a win. And four teams still looking for their first Big East win, and Seton Hall's one of them. They will host the Rutgers Scarlet Knights as Louis Orr looks to get on the board this year. That's coming up Saturday at Time Warner Sports at noon. Later that day, West Virginia at Syracuse right here at the Cary Dome. That's a 2 o'clock tip. It's also live on Time Warner Sports 26. And John Beeline, the former LeMoyne coach. Had him going there. I think they were 10-0 at yeah, one point. Yeah. And no, and, you know, everything was going well. They're playing great team basketball, and all of a sudden things have really changed. And as this game right here, Georgetown now with five steals. And how about the points off turnovers? Nine over Syracuse's eight. And really, you talk about getting a team at the right time. And West Virginia, I think they're getting it at the right time. But Georgetown, they've won seven out of eight. They're feeling good. They won at Pittsburgh. They won at Villanova the other night. Well, and that the was that crashed the car. You know, if you have young players, it's one thing. Pick up some home games. But if you come out and you're winning on the road, that, that's, that speaks volumes. And a foul called out top, and that win for Georgetown the other night at Villanova. The Wildcats were celebrating their NCAA championship win. Oh, that's right. Remember? That's yeah. right. And uh, the, the outcome of the game in the championship game was 66-64 Villanova, and then Georgetown turns the tables on that night with they had the whole team in there, the reunion, and Georgetown wins 66-64. You might not want to celebrate that game to start out the Big East season. Just get a win. Yeah, never... Want to poke at somebody who's, you know, an animal that's in the corner, as they say. And the Hoyas came out and took it to him. And they're taking it to the orange here to start the second half. And Josh Pace, that's a big basket. Josh Pace, a couple of big buckets down the stretch in that Providence game to help the orange pull out the win. And that's a big one right there. Yeah, and not a, not a true two guard. He's got an unorthodox game offensively, but he always finds a way to get in the paint and score. And the fans can finally sit down almost three <laughs> minutes in. Oh, now the orange can relax. That's too. right. Pressure's off. I'm waiting for the first press conference where the guys come in after the game and say, no, nah, Georgetown didn't bother me. It was the fans standing <laughs> up and clapping the whole time. Seven on the shot clock. Bowman inside to Green. Watch for the kick out. This time Green takes it and a nice block. Rebounded and knocked out of bounds. 
Boy, Green got the ball down low. I thought he had a good opportunity to go to the bucket. He came back out and ended up taking a tougher shot the second time around. And Roberts got a piece of it, and the Orange get the ball back with a chance to tie or take the lead back. Here's Pace. Got Roberts inside. That's blocked by Green. Hibbert picks up the loose ball. And Ray Reed will slow it down for Georgetown. Ray Reed, the sophomore out of Inglewood, California, pressed into the role of point guard here with Ashanti Cook on the bench with four fouls. And so far, they haven't missed Cook yet. They keep good spacing on the floor, and they have a real good balance. When somebody dies, somebody else comes up. They're really well aware of where they should be. Six on the shot clock. Here they go again, and Bowman fire. That's an air ball. And Warwick pulls down the rebound. Another good defensive stop for Syracuse. McNamara for the lead. And a foul before the follow. Foul's going to go against Hibbert, I believe. Oh, just aggressive ball right there going to the offensive board, Jim Beheim. Talking about what happened at the other end of the floor where he didn't feel he got the call. Two fouls on Roy Hibbert as the Hoyas have taken the lead here in the second half. Back at the Cary Dome, the Orange have come out a little cold here in the second half. 54% at halftime, one for six in the second half, and scored two points in the first four-plus minutes. Yeah, and they're getting some good looks. I mean, shots that normally McNamara makes, McCroskey as well. Good news is they're only trailing by two as Warwick goes baseline and a foul before the shot. And in the that's NBA, the that's probably good, right? NBA? That's right, a little continuation. Yep. Well, what I like about this, you're playing against a freshman. You're a key mark. You have the reputation. You're the man in the Big East. Put that ball on the floor and attack. The freshman is not going to get the call in that situation. Green picks up the foul. That's his second. A lot of contact down low. McNamara uses the screen. Did he get the roll? He did. Looked like Roberts almost interfered with it. He, he wants a three. And here's that pressure. This is, I think the fans are waiting for it. And they did give him a three. The lob to Green and McNamara breaks it up. But Jerry getting back to break up the alley-oop. Roberts forces Green out of bounds with the ball off Syracuse, apparently. And the fans don't agree. McNamara doing an outstanding job of hustling back. Green still managing to get the ball. And somehow, Hoy has retained the ball. As somehow Terrence was Roberts tried to pull it down, it looked as if it went off Green's foot. But Hoy has retained possession. Now well, the officials are huddling at midcourt here. And if they can hear themselves talking this over, they get a lot of encouragement from the fans on which way to go. And possibly they're talking about the McNamara shot the last time down. Is it three or two? And clearly, no doubt about that's that. three one. points, and they have three up on the scoreboard. Ooh. Oh. My. I was going to say, it looked like Roberts got it, his it, hand on yeah, when it was it up there. It looked like he definitely touched that, and that ball was clearly in the cylinder. And they're going to the monitor to take a closer look here. And here, Beheim and Thompson are only about eight feet apart there midcourt. Take one more look here. As McNamara lets that shot go. Watch Terrence Roberts come in. Well, it's hard to yeah, tell it's from hard that to angle. Tell this angle. I mean, he looked like he wanted to touch the ball. You can't tell if he pulled away. It didn't look like the ball rotation changed directions or anything, which sometimes is an indicator. Let's take a look from a different angle here. Oh, oh boy, if he, yeah. he just kind of slapped got, it. He got a fingernail on that, if anything. All right, so Georgetown inbounding, 19 on the shot clock. And it is a three-pointer for McNamara, and the Orange oh. have the lead back. Big break for Syracuse. That's one of those plays where you know, it was so close that you almost have to give the benefit of the doubt to Georgetown on it. Two on the shot clock for Reed, who drives, throws it up. Rebound fought for, kicked around, and the Hoyas come up with it. They've gotten a lot of loose ball in this game. Scrappy team. 
Just what you'd expect from Georgetown. That hasn't left him. Here's Green inside. Nice move. Pace the offensive or defensive rebound. Dunk of the night for Hakeem. 250th stuff of his career. He's approaching Leo Routon's record, isn't he? <laughs> and his bow so. inside. Uh, you know, at the other end, Syracuse handling pressure by McNamara being aggressive with the dribble. If you want to be pressured, attack it. And there's Hakeem Warwick, just a great finish. I love watching him finish around the basket. He explodes above the rim. And, you know, quite honestly, being around the NBA all the time, that's one thing you hear, his ability to finish above the rim. And he could take off from anywhere around that free throw well, lane, that the Notre, lane there. The dunk against Notre Dame. Yeah, the <laughs> extension, just the plastic arms that come. Well, people don't realize the advantage you have when you have the big mitts. When a player like Akeem Moore who can palm the basketball easily, that's like adding a foot to your jump. Because you can extend and put that ball anywhere you want. You look back in the history of the game, players like Dr. J, Michael Jordan, they had the advantage because of the huge hands to be able to extend above and beyond the defense. Bowen hit the first free throw. He's got 12 points in this game. He's had a solid game. He's playing with three fouls. And playing well with three fouls. Yep. Six minutes into this first half, hasn't picked up another. And a foul that time on Reed going for the steal. John Thompson trying to quiet Reed down. He felt he didn't get the right call there. John Thompson immediately said, hey, settle down. We, we got what we want right here. We're in the game. Let me handle the referees. You just keep playing. And he's working him over there. Just doesn't quite stare him down the way his dad did. <laughs> when you're 6'10", it's a big difference. He's a big guy. He's 6'4". And a great ball player in his own right. Back in his days at Princeton, but when you're 6'10", there's the intimidation factor. That adds a little bit. Yeah, exponentially, right? I wouldn't know myself. One point lead for the Orcs. You get the feeling this one's gonna come down to the wires. McNamara throws in another three. No doubt about that one. 4-3 the game for Jerry. He's got 12. This is what Jerry McNamara has done his entire career, make big shots. He wants the ball. Now the crowd on its feet, and Darrell Owens sits him back down. Owens, a big stuff on the other end. And Georgetown continues to play smart basketball. No panic against the pressure. Nice pass from Lekowski. And Roberts going up for the two-hander is fouled. Oh, one of the advantages of McCroskey, he does have the ability to put the ball on the floor, get into the lane, and make passes just like this. Drawing the defense and finding Roberts, who you expect nothing less. Robert get, Roberts gets the ball. He's an energy guy. He goes up. He tries to make something happen. Third foul on Jeff Green and Roberts to the free throw line. You love a player that can come in off the bench, not take a lot of time to warm up, attack the basket, and just give you rebounds, blocks, and steals, and Roberts fits that bill. Roberts has been the freshman that has stepped up in this sophomore class. Bowman down the lane. Oh. Tried to dunk, and he was fouled. He was trying to poster that one. Impressive move. And by the way, Jerry McNamara, another reason that crowd got up on that last three. Oh, this is, this is a team of work, like holding that ball up with the extended hand and trying to just drop it in. Uh, it, Bowman is just such a deceptive player. There you see Jerry McNamara, another reason that crowd was up. He is now the all-time three-point shooter at Syracuse. He passed Preston Shumpert with his fourth three of the night, 250 and counting. Boy, pretty good company right there. Lawrence Moten, Marius Yunotis. And how many more will McNamara have by the time he's done here? Maybe 100 more? <laughs> he's going to put that record uh, well no out of reach. Of course, the luxury of coming in as a freshman, going with the team throughout the NCAA tournament, a lot more games, That's a right. lot more shots. Also a testament to his ability to, to win. And the Orange with a two-point lead now. Seven minutes into the second half. Kim Warwick has been calling for the ball. His arms are outstretched. He's been demanding it, but they've scored in other ways. 
And, and you know what? What happens a lot of times when your big man is demanding the ball, defense is focused to try to keep him from getting it, and that's going to open up some opportunities where the weak side doesn't come over in time to help. Another assist for McNamara. He's got five in the game. Orange with a four-point lead. The crowd wanting more. Reed penetrates. And now Reed left open in the corner, and he buries a three. We've got to give Georgetown credit. Kept making that pass, didn't panic. And, and Syracuse really moving out. They took that shot away from Wallace, but they found Reed. And now a quick shot by McCroskey. Rebounded by Ward, and he drops it in. Thought he might bring the rim down there, but Warwick chose to lay it up softly. Nine rebounds and 14 points for Hack. On his way to another double-double. Green fouled on the baseline before the shot. Craig Fourth picks up the foul. That's his third. And a timeout on the floor. Jerry McNamara, number three, all-time leader in threes at Syracuse, the Orange. Three-point lead. Well, Jerry McNamara moving into first place on the all-time three-pointer list at Syracuse, and who else should be at the top of that list? All right, you know what? When you look at McNamara's shots, it's not just the fact that he takes three-point shots. is when he takes them. Critical times in the game. With the game on the line, when you really need to get something going, you can always count on Jerry McNamara to step up and make big shots. And he's distributing the basketball on top of everything else with his five assists in this ball game. That's a great point. Even when Jerry's, you know, 0 for 8 or 1 for 9, when it comes down to the end of the game, there's one guy you want shooting it, and that's McNamara. Well, how many guys do you see get scared? They miss a couple of shots. They don't want to shoot anymore. And as you said, Jerry can miss seven, eight shots. He believes he's going to make the ninth and the tenth. And that's an unbelievable quality. Mark Larson and former Orangeman Leo Routens here with Georgetown and Syracuse. The renewal of the rivalry and maybe the rebirth of the rivalry as it's kind of died down a little bit in the last seven, eight years. But the Hoyas seem to be back as a team, as a program. And John Thompson's back on the sidelines. Boy, he put a towel on that guy's shoulder. And we really have ourselves a rivalry renewal. Bowman saves it. Look at all the players on the ground. Don't tell me this rivalry has died at all. Hibbert, freshman on the ground. Nice back pass. Again, a beautiful pass from Hibbert. Continues to surprise. Every time he gets the ball, he's looking to try to get somebody a better shot. He's a little Vlade-esque out there. Seven foot. Oh, nice. I like that. He liked the depth passing. Vlade Divac. In his day, could pass to the best of him. And Hibbert, how many assists? Well, they only give him one. That, that's that absurd. Right. He's got to be. He's, he's got to be close to five in this ball game. Fourth offensive rebound. McNamara for three. And Hibbert pulls that one down. Green out to Bowman. And Georgetown going to reset. Good job by Syracuse to get back. Owens is off, Hibbert in the lane. Wallace recovers. And now Green, set shot, three-pointer good. Georgetown back on top. But you wonder why they get offensive rebounds. They don't take a lot of rush shots. They take their time. They allow their teammates to get set and know when that shot's going to be taken. Again, a great quality for a young team. McNamara caught in the air. He throws it away. It's a three-on-one for Georgetown. Bowman the finish. Oh, heads up on. play. Heads up play by Wallace. As he was delivering the ball to Bowman, he used his body to be a shield and give him a clear angle to the bucket with no D. Seven straight points for the Hoyas. Timeout, Jim Beheim. Just under 10 minutes to go here. Had Georgetown not going anywhere. And they haven't lost on the road yet this year. And looking to keep that streak intact. They just keep coming. They keep coming. They don't, like you said, they don't panic. No, they don't. You expect them at some point in time to start jacking up shots, ill-advised shots, but they're not doing it. They're waiting for the right opportunity to get the open looks defensively. They're staying with it, and they're getting out in the break. Watch this job by Wallace. As he delivers the ball, he gets right in front of McCroskey to completely take his ability to guard the man with the ball, Bowman away. Outstanding job. Brandon Bowman, 16 points.
Jeff Green, who hit the three, has 12. And you look at the Big East Conference standings and the statistics, third best three-point shooting team in the conference. And, and like you said before, that's unusual. Well, and once you get to see them play, you can understand why the percentage is good. They don't force shots. They make that extra pass. They keep waiting for the opportunity. They don't take them early in the clock. And so many teams really hurt their percentages and chances because of those poor elements of shooting. Well, they're averaging eight threes a game. They've got eight right now as Warwick is fouled on the little turnaround hook shot. He really wants the ball. He's been calling for it this entire half here going up. And once he extends, there's not many players in this league, or in any league for that matter, that are going to be able to contest that shot. How about Jim Beheim calling on Warwick to go right at Jeff Green, and Green picks up his fourth foul. With 9.31 to go, he'll have to take a seat. Now, even a good defensive player, if Warwick sets them up and gets down low and uses his legs, using that hand, as we talked about earlier, to extend the ball away from his body, that defender's not going to be able to block it or contest the shot. If anything, they will reach and try to and commit the foul, as we saw there. He's used that hand to do one-handed pump fakes, get people in the air, and then go right by him. It's mm -hmm. something I've never seen. No good on the first free throw. And he got the second. 15 now for Warwick. Cuts it to three. Terrence Roberts in for Craig Fourth. And McCroskey in for Billy Edelin. So now it's Roy Hibbert and Terrence Roberts in the middle. Hibbert with a big size advantage there. The orange almost taken away. And watch what Georgetown does. They come down. They didn't take a quick shot. And that's the, it's enticing. You're coming down. You have an advantage. Let's take that shot. They haven't done that. Instead, waiting to get this shot right here. Cook back in the game with four fouls. Hibbert, offensive rebound. He's fouled. And that's what I was referring to, Mark. If you wait and take that shot, once everything is a little bit more established, it'll calm. Your teammates know that shot's taken, and they get a chance for the rebound. Here you kick it out. Well, look at the position they have. So you have two, three blue shirts right on the bucket waiting, and Hibbert, you don't need to give him a lot of room. As long as he is, he's going to get that rebound. Fourth foul on Terrence Roberts. And fourth didn't get much time to rest over there. He's back in the game now in place of Roberts. And Terrence, not a happy man. Georgetown has been to the line 14 times. Nice percentage, 11 to 14. The Syracuse has been here 17, but have only converted eight. And they have usually hit their free throws at home and missed them on the road, but tonight struggling here at home. And it's a four-point lead, nine minutes to go. Pace. McCroskey back to Pace, and he got the floater. Well, this is usually a time that you see Pace start stepping up. Looking for his offense a little bit more. Such a veteran lineup for that Syracuse squad in stark contrast to the Georgetown team. And you like to think that'll help you down the stretch, but the Hoyas have looked anything but young here tonight. Yeah, so far, nothing seems to bother him. What a great pass there. Nice pass inside to Bowman. Picks up the foul on the floor. Right, Darrell Owens just a... <laughs> Bullet pass onto the baseline. Head up, just freezing the defense, kind of that blank stare, and then throwing it right down to Bowman, who's been about as active as anybody can be in this game. He's just constantly moving on that baseline, stepping into the middle, coming up high, dropping back down. He loves that short corner area. Already bettering his season average, and he got another. Seven for nine at the free throw line tonight. 17 points in the game. That last foul was on Josh Pace, his second. Tell that Princeton background right there, John Thompson saying, hey, be smart. <laughs> John Thompson majored in politics. Princeton, the guy who can carry on more than one conversation, it's, huh? Yeah, must be. One for two at the line for Bowman. Orange could tie with a three. Jerry McNamara already has become the all-time leading three-point shooter at Syracuse. Can he add another? Not that time. Fourth offensive rebound, can't get it. A lot of contact down there, and nothing called. And Warwick looking for something. Meanwhile, 
On the other end, Darrell Owens. That would have been a big three. And Warwick comes out with it. James getting a little scrappy right now. Syracuse so got to make sure they come down and get a good shot. This is not what they needed right there. A turnover. Tough pass for any seven-footer to reach down and get around his ankles. Well, the Orange turn it over, and they trail by three, 7.42 to play. Oh, Georgetown Hoy is picking things up on the offensive side here in the second half. I'm waiting for this team to lose their shot selection, panic a little bit, but it's just not happening. They're moving a the basketball. Everybody's getting involved in the game. They're also getting out and taking their opportunities wisely in transition. John Thompson doing a real good job with this group. I like his. I've talked about poise on the floor. I've really been impressed with his poise on the sidelines as well. Well, he just has that calm demeanor and a 9-3 Georgetown run over the last four minutes as the Orange struggling to score some points. McNamara hit that three-pointer to pass Preston Shumpert. And since then, it's been very little of offense. Free penetrates. Good job by Fort to stick a hand in there and knock it away. And Pace controls for the Orange. And we saw Reed with the turnover. He's the one player. If you read the scouting report on Georgetown, that can be maybe a little bit wild trying to do too, a little too much with the dribble. Showed right there. Warwick on the drive, and he finishes. A key Warwick, 17 points, 10 rebounds. I just like the fact that he wants the ball right now. He's calling, he's telling his teammates, hey, give me the rock. And as you said before, he should. He's the man out there. And Warwick, McNamara, and Pace have scored a big chunk of the points for the Orange. And they cut it to one. Ten on the shot clock for Wallace. Wallace throws up a prayer. Hibbert gets the rebound and dumps it in. Syracuse has to make sure when that shot goes up, you have to find a man. If there's one guy you might want to look for, it's Hibbert. He's done a great job in the offensive glass all night long. His 11th rebound. Hibbert also has nine points in this game. Back to three on the lead. Warwick, fourth, picked up the ball and dropped it in. Alert play right there. His man, Hibbert, left to help out on Akeem Warwick, and that gave him the opportunity for the tip. And Craig fourth now with 10 points. Syracuse advantage in the paint, 28-22. And the rebounding total also favoring Syracuse and a big turnover there. Pace to the basket. Orange lead. Well, finally, the Hoyas have shown a crack. Couple of turnovers. Just as we praised him That's right. for their patience and their poise. Craig Forth sticking a big paw in the passing lane and starting the transition at Pace. A good take all the way in. Josh Pace has 12 points. Yeah, he's and done a good chance for the three point play. Real nice job here in the second half. And, you know, we, we talk about Georgetown panicking a little bit. They're trying to make a couple of plays where even if the passes get through, they're, they're great. They, they have to become great passes just to get to Jim Beheim's team right now doing the job defensively and putting it up to the pressure. And John Thompson wants time. And the crowd, as loud as it's been all season, 23,485 in attendance. And they're all on their feet as the Orange and Storbeck take a two-point lead here with 528 to go. Ashanti Cook and Jeff Green both have four fouls for the Hoyas. And the crowd just waiting for the Orange to kind of seize control of this game. And I think they like the fact that it's a nice tight game, but, you know, they want to keep this winning streak going. The Orange have not lost at home this year. And you take a look at the shot from 1985, 32,229 at that time. An all-time record on a college campus. And we dissolved to 20 years later. And that's about as quickly as it seems to have gone those well, 20 years. A, this 23,000 is doing enough, making enough noise to make it feel like it's 30,000 in here. 
And Jim Beheim's team right now, they're doing what they need to do. They're struggling offensively, so how do you get over that? Generate points out of your defense. Be more active, try to get something that way, and that's starting to work for them. 61-59, 7-0 run for Syracuse. And now Cook back in the game with those four fouls, and so is Jeff Green. Ten on the shot clock. Bowman to Green to Cook for three. Now it's a long two. Better call it a two, and we're back to a tie game. A oh, heads-up play once again. Green on the baseline. He's the master of the baseline, whether it's scoring or making a pass. Very comfortable down there. Another assist for Jeff Green. He's got six. Here's Warren. And Green might have picked up his fifth foul. And that's the that's what we discussed earlier. When you're a key more and the Big East is yours, you've dominated for a while. You need to go to the basket because you're going to get the call against the freshman. Well, Green contributes on one end, but on the other end, picks up his fifth foul, and the true freshman is done for this one. His first Syracuse Georgetown rivalry game will end up with him sitting on the bench for the final 444. Yeah, tried to get in there and help out as Akeem Warwick was turning into the middle. A big break for Syracuse. Green has had a solid game. Not, not monster numbers, but his floor game, his presence, his understanding of what to do out there. Outstanding. A couple other players in foul trouble for Georgetown. Bowman and Cook. Their leading scorer and their leading passer. Yeah, Bowman's been in foul trouble all game, and it hasn't affected his play at all. Akeem Warwick, 17 points, 10 rebounds tonight. Coming off a big performance at Providence, and he can really hurt you from a lot of different places on the floor. Well, in the first half, he had that jump shot, a little turnaround. In the second half, feeding off his teammates, going to the bucket, much more aggressive, trying to finish around the hoop. And when he gets that nice mix of going inside, outside, but really the, the, the larger part of that has to be using his length and extension and finishing around the basket, and he's focused in on that down the stretch. Ninth double-double of the season, 35th for his career. And the first free throw off. If there's one thing you can say about Hakeem that hasn't gone right tonight, free throw shooting is five out of nine now. And he rolls that one in. Well, we're coming down to it. Four and a half to go. One point lead. Hibbert spins at fourth the rebound. A big fella. A little too hard there. Nice move. Just couldn't get it. Graceful looking move for Hibbert, but he can't convert. That's a great point. He is he's very graceful. Everything he does just seems to be very smooth out there. Makrowski in the face. Lowry face. Lou Makrowski, big bucket. And the crowd. Channing Lou. That's why Jim Bayham has him on the floor. He loves his quickness. He's able to break the defense down and get those hoops going to the basket. Jonathan Wallace. That looked good for three. Owens, the offensive rebound. And he's fouled on the floor. McCroskey picks it up. High arcing shot right there. Long rebound. Really I think is. it kind of threw everybody for a loop. You expect a long rebound, but that one just bounced way back. Now Wallace really throws up Rainmakers when he shoots it. They're pretty effective to this point, but McCroskey, the drive on the baseline. Orange have a three-point lead, four minutes to go. Syracuse University basketball on time with a Sports 26 is sponsored by Dodge. Grab life by the horns. By Time Order Digital Phone. Unlimited calling for one low price. And by Legacy Automotive. Nobody beats the powerhouse. Back the carry dome. Orange with a three-point lead. It's still three. Darrell Owens will get one more free throw. Four players in double figures for the Orange, including Craig Forth, his first of the year. What a time for it. Well, he got off to a great start. He's really picked it up again down the stretch. Four or five shootings. So whatever, you can't get much more efficient than that. And he's been a presence on the offensive board as well. Scored the first five points of the game for Syracuse. And Craig Forth coming up big at a big time. And here's Warwick. 
And he's fouled by Owens. And once again, you see that the concern the defense has not letting Ward get to the bucket. And he's got great body movement, able to fake one way, go the other way. Any contact, he's going to be the beneficiary and get to the free throw line. And Warwick also a double double. That's his 19th point. Kind of the same principle. You see that in the NBA all the time. Jim Baham loves it when his main man attacks the bucket. In the NBA, you see a rookie, all of a sudden people attack and fouls are called. No different with freshmen coming into a league. 20 points for Hakeem Warwick. And the Orange with a four point lead, their largest lead in a while. Let's see how the Hoyas respond. They have responded every time thus far. But Jeff Green is on the bench with five fouls. One of their best offensive players. Ten on the shot clock. Cook for three. Off McNamara's knee and out of bounds. Hibbert broke that one up. Looked like Warwick had the rebound for a second. And good effort by McNamara. You always want to make sure those long rebounds, especially at the end of the game, you're down the last three minutes, it's gang rebounding. Everybody's got to be on the boards. New shot clock for the Hoyas. Good defense by the Orange. They catch up to Bowman. They leave Owens for a second. He fires, got his own rebound. Cirque is doing a great job of getting out on shooters. They're covering a lot of territory, but you got to block out the shooter. Owens again. That time he got it. Darrell Owens making the most of his second opportunity. Hits the three, and it's a one-point game. And once that shot leaves the shooter's hand, your first obligation, if you're contesting, is to block out, prevent him from being the one to get the rebound. And those kind of efforts really hurt Syracuse. I thought was doing outstanding, moving, getting up on the shooters, and really rotating well. All right, time to embarrass you a little bit here, partner. Uh, Leo Routens, of course, uh -oh. former Orange player, one of 25 <laughs> players on SU's All Century team, played from 1980 to 83. Looking good you know, I've right been trying there. Trying to bury those pictures. Oh, I don't know I what it. I was thinking. I have love no the idea. curl. Seventh all-time and assist, and he only played here three years. Led Syracuse in rebounds and assist as a senior. Was the 17th overall pick by the 76ers back in '83. I did my research. Oh my God, I'm impressed. And also started his TV career here at Time Water Sports. <laughs> Dan and Horde. He got rid of the curls there. Yeah, yeah. Got the old hair. And my now, goodness. of course, working with the Toronto Raptors. Still got my hair. That's the most, I'm happy with it's that. Beats the alternative, doesn't it? <laughs> and last night, you uh, did a game for Toronto, and tomorrow night, you're doing another one, but happy to have you here tonight. Uh, this has been great. I've really enjoyed this, and just being out here and seeing a Georgetown Syracuse game, working with you, Mark, it's been a lot of fun. Well, and you've practically know everybody in the arena from uh, the pregame. <laughs> <laughs> Chat. Uh, my, my theory is slip everybody you know a, a 10 bucks to come by and say <laughs> hi look good. Well, you got me fooled. And the Orange trying to add to the one point lead. Dangerous pass. Fourth. Can't finish the layup. Hoyas can take the lead back with two and a half to go. And a timeout taken by John Thompson. Craig Fourth had it. Down deep, just where you want it. Yeah, he wanted it. Actually, dangerous pass, as you pointed out. Pace saw him. Fourth was calling for the alley-oop. Just couldn't get just a little too hard as he let it go. Right here, see, he just put his hand down. He was calling for it. Gets up over. The defense goes up. Felt a little pressure from behind. Overshot the ball. That's a, one of those plays. We said it in the first half. He had a play where he went up and just tried to dunk it. That's another example. Just go up. Try to take the rim down. You'll get a foul out of it. Worst case scenario. All right, coming up tomorrow night, more Big East basketball women's style. Notre Dame at Syracuse up at Manley Fieldhouse. A 7 o'clock tip right here live on Time Warner Sports 26. And then high school hoops coming up on Friday night. Mexico at JD. The Tigers are playing great. And they're taking on the Red Rams in their brand-new gymnasium. And J.D., very close to your heart, Andy Routen. Yeah, I've seen that play, team yeah. play a few times. Leo's son <laughs> plays for J.D. and the Red Rams coming off their state championship last year. That's Friday night at 7. Hey, you know what I just realized? You put up black and white pictures of me. <laughs> That's how old I am. There's no video. <laughs> Man. We didn't have moving pictures back then. <laughs> Well, McNamara takes it away. That's a big turnover by Georgetown. And now Syracuse is going to milk a little clock here. Under two to go. And McNamara brings it back out. 
This is where you hope your veteran leadership takes over. As Magner lost his feet, lost the ball, still loose. Wallace has it. Pull up jumper, air ball. That's something we haven't seen all game long from Georgetown. A quick shot in transition. And look what happens. Bad time of the game to take the first one like that. John Wallace, true freshman, a little excited there. Chance to give Georgetown the lead, hit the big shot, and nothing but air, and Syracuse has it back. Advantages of having the veteran players. Jim Beheim staying calm on the sidelines, telling his guys exactly what he wants to run down the stretch, and hopefully with McNamara pacing Akeem Warwick, you're going to get it done. And the Hoyas with 10 team fouls, so any foul they commit, a lot of contact shots. here. A lot of contact. You can see that foul coming, Mark. Owens was reaching, stabbing, trying to go at the ball instead of just playing a good position, holding his ground. Right here, he's grabbing, he's holding, he's reaching. That was a foul waiting to happen. I wonder if they ever would keep a statistic on fouls drawn. How many fouls has Warwick drawn on Georgetown tonight? Seems like he's been at the line the entire second half. Yeah, just got to get the free throws down. He's got an excellent form, no reason. He can't be an outstanding free throw shooter. And he got the second. Fourth nine of 14 at the free throw line tonight. Two point lead. Well, seven to go. And the crowd on its feet. Foul on the floor as Bowman looking to create. Going to be a one and one for Brandon Bowman. I don't Bayheim. think Jimmy saw a foul there. He'd oh. like another look at that one. Bowman has been active all game long in the lane and tough call. Yeah, think about all the contact it took on the other end for Warwick to get the foul, and that one seemed a little quick, but nonetheless, Bowman at the line, one and one. And he missed the front end. Final minute of play, Orange with a two-point lead. Looking for their 11th straight win. Looking to go 18 and one on the season. And a timeout by Jim Beheim. Closing in on 700 wins. Jim Beheim at 693 and counting. Just does a phenomenal job. Look at the free throw shooting here. Georgetown 70%, Syracuse. Only 54%. Great effort at getting to the line. And, you know, you look at a close game like this, what a difference those free throws could make. This game would have been over a while ago. And Coach Beheim's stomach would probably be feeling a lot better by now if they <laughs> made a few more of those. Georgetown, fifth in the conference in free throw shooting, just under 70%. Oh, I'll tell you what, regardless of what happens in this ballgame, Georgetown has to feel good about the way they played. Syracuse, they did what you expect them to do. They pulled this game, and, and down the stretch, they're playing strong. And the fans are strong, towels. too. That's right. <laughs> They've handed out the terrible towels here. Haven't really seen much of them, but nice souvenir to take home from this one. 74th meeting of Georgetown and Syracuse. Mark Larson and Leo Routon at the Carrier Dome. And the Orange. Looking to add to a two-point lead. 15 on the shot clock. McNamara in and out. And read the rebound. Nervous time. And a timeout. Hoyas. Mark, I remember a game my senior year. Georgetown came into the Carrier Dome. We had just lost to North Carolina. And Mark Jackson, a freshman, hit a three to win the ball game. And they've got some freshmen out there that can hit. We'll see what happens. Come on back for the final 30 seconds. 30 seconds to go. The Hoyas have the basketball trailing by two. They can hold for the last shot if they want to, and no reason to think they won't. That's right. Syracuse, you want to get out make sure it's not a three. Hoyas out of timeouts. The Orange have one remaining. As I said, I have to correct myself. Mark Jackson against us hit a top of the key jump shot to win the game. It wasn't a three because they had no threes back there. <laughs> that goes back. You're dating yourself again. Here we go. Brandon Bowman out top. Crowd on its feet. Boys have lost four in a row to Syracuse. 
They're going to change that. Nine seconds left. Bowman. Foot on the line. That's a two. Two seconds to go. One. McNamara. We're going to overtime. Wow. <laughs> Bowman. That's all. I just told you about Mark Jackson. That was almost from the same spot. Fortunately, it was a two-point shot. History repeats itself. They didn't win. It's just going to overtime. They may take a look at this, though. The Hoyas thought this was a three-pointer. I definitely saw his toe step over the line right there. That right toe on the line. Good call by the officials as McNamara has said he hasn't hit a half quarter yet here at Syracuse. He used to hit him with regularity in high school. Wants to do it here. Take another look. Just Again. on the line. Oh, that's still a big shot right there. Bowman has had unbelievable ball game here. 19 in the ball game. No question it was a two. And one more look at the last shot as you see the clock winding down at Bowman. Nails. That's a guy who started every game of his Georgetown career, and you know he's only a junior. By next year, we're going to think that this guy's been here for five, six, seven <laughs> years. And Brandon Bowman. I tell you what, you talk about renewing a rivalry. It's about as good as it gets right here. Get one more look. Jerry McNamara trying to pressure the shot. And right there, you see that right foot. Right toe on the line. But still, just a big shot right there. The Hoyas just will not go away. Syracuse, every time it appears, they're going to put them away. They come back and give themselves one more shot. Well, so many games in this series have gone down to the buzzer, have been decided in overtime. You mentioned the one that you were involved with where Georgetown won it at the horn. And if Georgetown can win here, what a huge upset that would be. Number seven, Syracuse. 42 of their last 45 games at home, they have won. Not used to losing here at the Dome, as Jim Beheim has seen this before. Absolutely. Jim Beheim's Beham, been here. He's calm. He's not worried. He knows what his team's capable of doing right now. And really, I think the answer is you've got to look in there, Keem Moore, and establish his presence early in overtime. You want to get a quick start, starting with this jump right here. First overtime game for the Orange this year. And that's a good way to start it. Georgetown in the 2-3 zone. They love a matchup zone. Crowd back circus. on their feet again, huh? Oh, yeah. See if they can sit them down here on this first possession. Enough pressure. <laughs> 14 on the shot clock. Jerry directing traffic. Bukrowski. Tough shot over him. Tough shot is right. Great job of using that dribble. Got it up high, really exploded up in the air. Nine points for McCroskey. And a two-point lead again for the OR. Now Syracuse has to understand now they cannot relax defensively. Georgetown is going to take their time. They've showed it all game long. You can't let up and have a breakdown at the end of the clock. Battle for the loose ball. Cook comes out of it. Looked like he traveled. Gets it to Bowman. And Bowman is fouled on the floor. A good effort there. Syracuse thought they had the ball. John Thompson's team, once again, didn't lose it and didn't panic. Good effort going after the ball right here. It looked like there may have been a travel. And Bowman has done all game long, makes the play. And a real touch foul there called. And they give it to Craig Forth, who's got four fouls now for the Orange. Missed the first. Brandon Bowman sent this game to overtime. And he missed them both. They should back up about five feet. A lot better from back there. <laughs> well, Hoyas have been doing a solid job at the line all night long. And Bowman especially has been there quite a few times. And the Hoyas have missed eight free throws tonight, and Bowman's missed six of them. 
And still a two-point lead for Syracuse. Jerry McNamara making a five-point lead. 15 for GMAC. And that's, a, three. and that's a guy that's been struggling down the stretch with his jumper there, Mark, but he didn't hesitate at all. He shot that shot like he's been making everyone all night. And he talked about that earlier in this game, that no matter how well he's shooting the ball, he's still the guy you want to take that shot. And more often than not, he buries it. Eight on the shot clock. Wallace throws at the pace. Look out the road. Seven-point lead for the Orange, their largest of the game. And this crowd is going bonkers. Cook to Wallace. That's a big shot. Just have, threw the ball away, and he throws it in for three points. Yeah, couldn't have come at a better time for Wallace. Still a four-point game. I was just about to say... They're starting to crack. <laughs> yeah, well, every time we were about to say this, this yep. is the way it's been. Like you said, win or lose, Georgetown's got to feel really good about this performance tonight. And they are for real. Warwick can't get his own rebound. Good effort, good effort. I thought there may have been some contact on the way up, but you like him going in there and going strong. Now Shanti Cook still out there playing with four fouls. There's Bowman inside. He's also got four. Cook, a little runner. Air ball. Thought he had an opportunity to get Wallace the ball again for another jumper. Once he put the ball on the floor and got into the lane, he could have kicked it back out. Made it be an easier look. Only seven points for Cook in this game. He's been quiet because of the foul trouble. 90 seconds to go for the Orange to wrap up their 18th win as Jim Beheim calls a timeout. Just in time. Looked like almost a 10-second call. What's he talking about over there, you think? Well, I know, well, I know I was watching John Thompson, and John Thompson was talking to Cook about exactly what I pointed out to you, that as he got into the lane, kick it back out to Wallace that was open for a three. Never happened. All right, the Hoyas play comeback ball. Minute 27 to go in overtime. Georgetown Hoyas haven't lost a road game yet this year. Syracuse Orange haven't lost a home game. One of those streaks is about to end. The Orange, a four-point lead here in overtime, and welcome back to Kerry Dome. And this crowd has gotten everything it hoped for, and you know, we've talked a lot about the rivalry throughout this game, and games just like this one are what brings it back. Oh, absolutely. This has been a typical Syracuse-Georgetown ball game from beginning to end. It's been a dogfight. Great performances from freshmen from Georgetown. Of course, the veterans for Syracuse, McNamara, Key Moore, stepping up as you would expect. More Big East basketball coming up on Saturday. A noon start as Louis Orr, former Orangeman, looks for his first win of the Big East season against Rutgers. That's a noon start. Saturday, live on Time Warner Sports 26. And then later that day, right afterwards, in fact, doubleheader, the Orange and the Mountaineers here at the Carrier Dome at 2 o'clock. Orange trying to milk a little clock here. Look at the three-point shooting. 17 threes in this game. How about 25 attempts for Georgetown? Wow. Ten on the shot clock. McNamara creates and hits. 17 for McNamara. Six-point lead. One minute to go. Here we go again. Can Georgetown respond? Hibbert's second chance in his foul. Uh, he deserved that call. There was a lot of contact when he got it the first time, and he just plays right through it. He doesn't seem to panic. He's not looking at the referee saying, hey, make the call. He just plays right through it until he gets it. And Craig Forth has fouled out of the basketball game. Double-double for the senior. Ten points, ten rebounds. A yeah, good ball game for Craig Forth. Gets a nice hand from the crowd, and Terrence Roberts will come in. He's got four fouls in this game. Roberts fouled out against Providence, and he's close to doing the same here against Georgetown with 54 seconds to go. No, it's also a luxury for Jim Beheim to have a player like Terrence Roberts to come in the game. He's got size, quickness, athleticism, which we talked about. 
pretty good replacement for Craig Ford. And let's hope the Orange can put this one to rest here in the first overtime. Should Roberts fall out, there isn't a whole lot of big bodies over there left. Uh, nothing like a win for the Bayheim family. Always easier to go home and relax. And hey, they've had their share of celebrating, haven't they? More often than not. That's right. Especially here at home. But the Hoyas giving them everything they can handle. Free throw bounces out. Jeff Green on the bench with five fouls. Yeah, that was a big, big bonus for Syracuse when Akeem Warren was able to get him out of the game. Hibbert hits the second, cuts it to five. And here's that press. And McNamara breaks it. Warwick back to McNamara. He's the guy that they want to be fouled. John Thompson, he keep continually calls out five, five. He wants the officials to be conscious of that. Eight on the shot clock. Pekroski, double clutch, lost the ball to Hibbert. 20 seconds to go, five point game. Out of contact, Bowman inside of Jow. He's blocked, Hibbert, second chance, and he scores again. Oh, he's becoming the ultimate garbage man right here. He's always in the right place to get his hands on the ball. John Thompson wanted a timeout, he didn't get it. But his team picks up the foul with seven seconds to go. So Thompson screaming for the timeout after that made basket. Did not get it, and a foul instead. And Hakeem Warwick back to the free throw line with a chance to ice this game. Well, Hakeem Warwick has had his struggles at the line, so not a bad choice to put on the free throw line. And here we get another look at Hibbert and how he finishes around the basket. His hands are up, he's waiting. You never want to take your eyes off the ball when a guy is penetrating. You, you may, even though he may be taking that shot, that ball might come to you. And Roy Hibbert has got a great presence out there. He's constantly watching the ball. Hands are up, hands are ready. And that's why he's going to be an outstanding player in this league. 12 points and 14 rebounds for the freshman. And there's another guy that in three years from now, if he sticks around that long, we're going to be saying he's been Georgetown forever, hasn't he? Well, he's just, you mentioned it, how smooth he is. He just plays the game effortlessly out there, he sees his teammates. He really could be a dynamite player in the Big East. Makes you wonder why they call him the Big Stiff. I still can't figure that one out. Brandon Bowman has fouled out of the game, meanwhile. Well, the guy Will Chamberlain, Wilt the Stilt, I don't think he appreciated that one either. <laughs> At least he could figure that one out. i still trying to figure that one out from Roy. Anyway, Bowman on the bench now. He's the guy that hit the shot to send it to overtime. But if Akeem Warren can hit these free throws, it's a moot point. Nothing but net on the first. And now it's a two possession game. And it's pretty much over. 25 points for Hakeem Warwick. Second straight game, he's at 25. And the Orange had to kind of hold their breath for a while, but they're going to pull this one out over the Hoyas. Darrell Owens, air ball, out of bounds. Point two on the clock. And the ball game's over. Deep side relief for the Orange and Jim Beheim, who picks up his 29th win over the Georgetown Hoyas, his first over John Thompson in seven years since John Thompson Jr. was still around. Jerry McNamara, some big shots in the second half. Craig fourth, a double-double, his first of the season. And Hakeem Warwick, his second straight double-double, 25 points, 11 rebounds. And the Orange win it again. Fifth straight win over Georgetown, but I'll tell you what, this rivalry's back. Leo, thanks for being here. A lot of fun. It really was, Mark. Thanks for having me. I really enjoyed the game. And again, Syracuse Georgetown, it's definitely back. It is back, and John Thompson back in the dome, but he comes up short in his first attempt. 78-73, the Orange win it in overtime. Thanks again for watching. Our next telecast coming up tomorrow night, live at 7 o'clock, the Syracuse Orange women hosting Notre Dame. For my partner, Leo Routens, and our producer, director, Mark Ballard, and all of us here at Time Order Sports, Mark Larson saying good night from the Carrier Dome. The Orange and the Hoyas get together, and Syracuse comes out on top.